This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by My Body Model. Create a custom design template based on your body measurements using this custom app created especially for garment stitchers. Get 15% off the app when you go to mybodymodel.com and enter code SEWHERE at checkout. Now through February 9th, 2019. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're going to try and counsel our listenership on how to buy fabric, I said wisely or intentionally. Okay, because I was right. I'm here writing and thinking, what? How do I describe this? Buying fabric. Well, blah blah blah. Um, okay, you have a lot of fabric, mom. For for purposes. Yeah. For purposeful or, buying of fabric. Or how to buy? Why this came up is some people. Some people purposes. were talking about buyer's remorse with fabric. It's never happened to me. Right. Yeah. So how has it? Why? Why do you think? Why do you think this has not happened to yeah, you? Yeah, I won't say I haven't bought fabric. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's get. Uh, I think yeah, this yeah. Is great. Okay, yeah. so I don't know. You know that piece of nubby knit that's got the gold fleck in it? Uh huh. We bought that online uh -huh. for a costume for you, and it came in, and it was like, well, this isn't right. This isn't going to work for for what we want for right. our intention, our our immediate intention. Yes. Right. Um. Now that was several years ago. <laughs> I was, that was 10 years ago, and we haven't used it yet, but I still like that fabric. I like it, too. Actually, I've, I had... Uh, right. Like, I have an idea for it right now, you know? Like, yes. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I have many ideas sure, for it. So sure, I guess that's why I'm not, like, I, I'm not remorseful, because I I enjoyed buying it. I'm glad I have it. Um, at the time, I might have went, oh, darn, now i got to look again for another piece of fabric. Right, because you don't have what right, you right. wanted. Right, right. Or, you know, if, uh, especially if it would have been down to a, um, you know, on some sort of timeline where I yeah. needed it right away, and here I thought it was coming in and it didn't happen. That could be a problem, too. I have another example, which I think might bring up just, like, another element of this uh, equation here. Another costume that we made was that blue ballroom costume with the bra. Um, with the that was what I originally bought that fabric for. Right. Was it? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, there's another fabric we ordered for that right. costume because we were on a time. Right. Uh, right. What do I want to say? That we was one of the fabrics we ordered. Okay, so we were on a deadline for this, and so instead of just buying one fabric and placing all right. of our <laughs> eggs in one basket, you bought two different blue sparkly knits. Right. And the one. Was uh, had sequins sewn onto it. Right, it's what we ended up using actually. Right, and it's what I made my maternity outfit right. out of. Right. What ten years later, but and the, I think we can take that maternity outfit and make some more costumes. Yeah, make something out of, out of it. Yeah. Make Zelda a costume. Make, right. <laughs> so, the other blue knit we bought though ended up being one that the like glitter was glued onto it, the gl and the glitter was very loose. We did very not like loose. how loose it was. It didn't it like kept, it. It, no. kept, it. It shedded. It was yeah. shedding glitter. We still have that fabric, too. We do still have that fabric. And now we know, like, a I little... Think it, I think we put a piece of yellow at that same time, too. Yeah, a piece of there. gold. There's mm -hmm. a gold, and then we bought the beige that we used. Now, this was rather in the early days of buying fabric online. That's Very 2007. True. I you know I don't know if they wouldn't send us a sample or we weren't willing to wait for a sample or I think how we, well, I it think was. we just thought let's order a bunch. I mean we knew the costume yeah. was going to be fairly brief too. So what we, we also ordered, knew we make a lot of costumes. Yes, we make a lot of costumes, yeah. so it's fine. Um, but I don't think we've ordered any other like sheddy glitter fabric since then either. Like, well, and we that, learned that is that shedding a lot. And I don't think many of them shed that much anymore. It's it's sort of like True. there's been an improvement in yeah. that, <laughs> yes. yeah, in that in last specific time. venue. Yes. <laughs> so we learned from that. But, okay, that fabric's not taking up a ton of space in our no. studio, right? Like it's. I have to say I've pulled it out several times and I just and, wind up not using it. Right. And you haven't gotten rid of it either. Right. No. Right. So you can learn from these things, but if you're experiencing buyer's remorse with fabric. Mm -hmm. Well, and it might be that you are on some sort of tight budget, mm -hmm. 
and oh, I just spent my blew my wad mm -hmm. on this, and now I can't buy something else. Or, yeah. Or you're on a timeline. Oh, I thought I could sew this, you know, today and tomorrow, and I could wear it on vacation or whatever, and you can't. So there might be remorse involved there. Is what I would think. Yeah, you know, I guess people just get remorseful because they're disappointed and they didn't get what they wanted. But I like stashes. <laughs> right. Know, I like my fabric library too. Well, let's talk about the fabric library. We know what we have. Right. So I think we're pretty good about not duplicating things. Like, and would you know you... that that's interesting because we do sort of know what we have. And we do not have a system of keeping track. We don't have an inventory system. Um, one reason we don't have it is if we, like, started it right now, it would take us weeks on weeks on weeks just to inventory it. Yeah, I don't and, think it's worth it. And it's worth, not willing it. Yeah, it's I'm not, not worth willing it. to do that. It's not worth our time. Right. Um, the other thing is, is that, I, you know, when I'm getting ready to use the fabric, I get it out and I want to feel it anyway. Right. Just like I did in the store. It's almost like I'm shopping in my own, you know, stacks of fabric. So, like, if I had an inventory and I did not, I would still have to go pull the fabric. Sure. Yes, and, I understand and feel what you're it saying. And, and yeah. try it out. So, and, and touch and, it. And... Yeah, I would have to do its tactile test, yeah. you know. So, if you, um, like, right now, I just But we think... are categorized. Do we know where to go? Right. Right. I just think about the kind of sewing we do right now. So, if, and, and how we avoid this kind of issue. Uh-huh. Um, we do mostly garment sewing mm -hmm. for, like, ourselves. But mostly for ourselves. A little bit right. of costuming mm -hmm. on the side for fun, you know, right? right? Um, we would not go out right now into a fabric store and, like, no matter how pretty or exciting the quilting cotton was, I don't think either one of us would no. be, like, tempted to buy that. No. Right? No. And at one time, you know, I was collect, I, and I still do, I mean... Like, I collected black and white fabric. Yeah. Or black and off-white fabric, uh -huh. say, ecru or so. And we have a stash of that, and I like that. And at one time, I would sometimes do that. I would go to the black and whites, you know, yeah. in the in the quilting area. Um, I never did it for a really long term. I, yeah. It was more like something would happen or, so, you know, I'd come up on something. Or when I was buying for another reason— I would sometimes overbuy. Yeah. Well, I'm not just going to buy a yard. I'm going to buy two yards or three yards or wh or whatever. Um, so, no. I don't think we would buy cotton right now. Yeah, I don't think we'd buy cotton. Unless we cotton. specifically knew we wanted to make something out of cotton. And I can't think of what it is right now. Now, just because we have plenty of something doesn't mean we won't buy more of that either. Because we well, have, true. like, right? So we have a lot of active wear knits. Yep. But we make... Which seems to be what I am compiling. Yeah, currently. like you're you're yes. making a lot of active wear. You're doing right. a lot of stuff. You're, you're color blocking it. You're making right. leggings and leotards and, uh -huh. and costumes. And so you wouldn't say, I have enough. You would look in the active wear section of a store. Because <laughs> nobody ever has enough. <laughs> nobody has enough. Uh, or I should curb my habit right here. Right. Or yeah. you, you would go to that part of the store and say, oh, this is a color or a texture right. I don't have. Right. Or something like that. Or when I was doing a lot of costuming, and especially costuming maybe that involved um, the daughters, the three uh -huh. of you, and Hillary was doing recitals, and you were doing, you know, recitals in college, say, you know, a lot of vocal recitals, things like yeah. that. Um, and I knew she'd need a dress. Or if I happened upon a fabric that I knew it was a color she liked, I knew, you know, it was a fabric that f fit many things. Like it was a good color, it was a good weight, it would make this, it would, you know, it'd be nice for this. I might buy four yards. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I'd probably use it. And if I didn't use it for that, especially if it was, you know, what I considered to be, like, a, a good deal, if I didn't use it for that, I'd probably use it in another costume for something else. Right. So I think getting to know what you like to sew can help. Yes. I have heard people say, um, like, I have a lot of this. You know, I've heard people say I have a lot of that slinky ITY knit, but it seems so thin. And they, you're wearing... You're wearing some like slinky stuff right now. I I feel my right. Nightgown. Isn't that like yeah? You're, yeah. <laughs> Mom's wearing a nightgown, <laughs> night so, shirt. But my husband thinks it's clothes because some of my clothes are made out of the same fabric. Go thinks ahead. it's made out of that rash guard pattern disease. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> he thinks I always have a rash guard on because everything I make looks like a rash guard. So, so you, I've heard people say I have all this stuff, and I, I love I bought it because I love the pattern, you know. But I don't know what to make out of it or whatever. So they haven't figured out what they can make out of it that they would like, right? You know. And so figuring out what you like to sew, I think, is really key here. You can't you can't just be on the fabric buying end of the sewing hobby. I think that's how you get. Well, yeah, you can. Well, <laughs> but I, I think if that's you how you can right. get buyer's remorse. Yeah, you can. If you don't right. know what well, you're going to use it for. Well, and if you have a limited space and things yeah. like that, that is a problem. Um, I had this really bad philosophy at one time. Well, let's just call it a philosophy. Let's not Well, did let's it work at the it. time? I don't know. Let's yeah, not yeah, label okay. it. Let's Go just ahead. say Go I had a philosophy at one time that, that, that helped me rationalize what I was doing. Okay. 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 I would buy fabric, and I might even have an intention for it. Oh, I'm going to make such and such. Yeah, yeah sure. You know, <laughs> the baby's overalls out of this. You know, <laughs> whatever. It's it's you know, it's baby whale corduroy or something. I'm going to make, you know, oh, I can make baby corduroy pants out of this or whatever. And it wouldn't happen. Yeah, you know. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I bought that, and now I haven't made it, and now it's six months later. And I haven't made it, and it's six months later, and she, you know, we're out of the season for corduroy, and um, oh, she's not wearing corduroy pants now. She would wear something else. And then I decided there was this thing where, like, but the enjoyment I got out of picking it out, and feeling it, and going through the other fabrics, and choosing this one for myself served a purpose. Okay, I think that's great because. I think maybe where some of the I mean I got rid no, of some remorse. <laughs> I think this is I think this is great because I think where the buyer's remorse comes from is crap, I guilt. haven't used Just guilt. this. Yes, the guilt. Yes. Okay, so if you can say I didn't use it in the time frame I thought I would. Right. But I mean, really, is any fabric like just unusable? Like fabric doesn't spoil like milk or something no, after no, a couple of weeks. No, like yeah. you know, it's I mean, not... you can keep you, even fabric, even natural fibers that degrade. Right. Certainly, you can keep for a really long time so, if you've got a good storage. So area. let's pretend you bought the baby well corduroy right. and you, you, the kid, you know, is well. I said that because we still have it. Okay. <laughs> and, and it's thirty and, years and, later. And Hillary <laughs> will be thirty nine soon. Yes. Okay. So you don't feel bad about it, like right at this moment, and it's not just because you're, uh, you know, going to be sixty six and you don't give a care. It's right. because you know. I am a creative sewing person. Right. I can use baby well corduroy for right. something. It's not like you bought, you know, something completely unusable. So if you are yeah, feeling, I have seen fabric that's had dates on it, like years. Yeah. You so know, if you are I never have bought that myself. But. Remorseful about something that was bought a long time ago. I I can understand why you might feel that way, but you mm -hmm. need to know that you're still sewing. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably still sewing. Well, you know, uh, the other thing is it's okay. now, here's another thing. I mean. And, and, you know, you can look at waste or, or, or poor decisions or however you want to, a mistake, whatever you uh -huh. want to call it. There, especially when we had our, our storefront, there would be a lot of people that were maybe in my position. They were 66, 70 years old, and they're like, I'm not going to make big quilts anymore. Yeah. Okay. And they would come in, and they would, they would bring their stash in. Uh huh. And they'd say, "I'm willing to give this to anyone, or can you use this to class for classes, or do yeah. you know of a Girl Scout troop, or can you give this to a school, or can it go to a, you know, a fax or home economics department? I mean, it di it didn't get dumped. Sure, sure. Okay, that's, no, I don't that's think great. it got yeah. wasted. I, you know, I, I, um, I actually have a like quilt on the end of my bed. You know, that's uh -huh. still, that was from somebody's. That was all donated. Somebody's. Like, yeah, it was all like stashed. Or, you know, it was like, I'm not going to use this. I'm never going to. My husband and I are traveling now. You know, I'm 70 years old. There's no way I can sew up all my fabric. And no one in my family sews. And that fabric. Yeah, you made, hear that too. Because yeah. a lot of times it's passed along in a family. Yeah, so maybe that fabric was kind of creating a little bit of pressure for them. Right. She felt very. Right, like, well, like, and there are the people space. that downsize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, are. are I mean, that's what's called downsizing. Right, called right sizing. Right sizing. Right sizing. Yes, right sizing. Well, let's take a quick break and let's come back and talk maybe a little bit about like right sizing for your space, your stash, and maybe right sizing for your shopping habit. Yeah. Well, well okay. Well, yep. Well, we could. <laughs> this episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by My Body Model. And Mallory's going to. Tell me all about my body model. Yeah, so I was kind of trying to explain this to mom, yeah. and then I thought, let's just 
Just turn on the record Explain it out loud. <laughs> so my body... Hey, we have a podcast. We have a podcast. With these microphones here. So my body model is a web-based app. It was designed by Erica Schmitz, and she is okay. a super smart, awesome woman who crowdfunded this project. We helped her out with that uh-huh. uh, last year, and now they're releasing a new version. It's new and improved. Oh, okay. okay. So this app exists on the web, and then you go there, and you buy credits to create your body model. Okay. So it's like buying time, kind of? Or? Sort of, yeah. And so, you know, you can buy one credit, you can buy three credits. The best value is to buy five credits, uh-huh. okay? And then you input your measurements, and it creates a croquis. Which, right. Okay, which was which, a croquis. Which, which is an outline of your body, a, three, a two-dimensional yep. model of your body yes. so that you can draw onto it. Yeah, so you can sketch onto that. You can right. imagine onto it. You can test out things like colors or shapes on your body. Well, okay? and I, people have probably seen um, some of my drawings that I've posted. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm I'm thinking about making this costume and I and I and Here you I, go. And, and I do that for other people. Uh-huh. So I like sort of croquis them. So right? we have four credits waiting for us Ooh. at My Body Model Mom. So one for me, one for you. Okay. And then I'm actually supposed to costume a two person show oh, coming really? up here. So I'm excited. So there is a discount before we get too far into this. I'm going to say this before we continue our conversation. You can get 15% off your order from My Body Model. You go to mybodymodel.com and when you check out Use the code so here. That's S E W H E R E, and you're gonna get fifteen percent off your oh, purchase. Wow! Okay? Well, yeah, buy that, as many as you can. That's then, right. Because you'll get that. You'll get a really good. Yeah, you rate. can get you can get the fifteen percent off all yeah. of your credits. So it could be like for you. It could be for your right. family. You could buy one for yourself now, and then that credit stays there. Oh, it does. In case you change shape or ah, something, you know. Okay, so, okay, yeah. yeah. So the credits, um, the sale of the credits is how the um, the app is supported, and it's how Erica it keeps can make, going, uh, right? Can continue to make improvements, right. et cetera, to it. The new version has a couple new body measurements oh, okay. to add to cr- increase sure. accuracy. And Erica's also working toward making the app more inclusive to include. Um, Right now, I think it's sort of geared toward the traditional, you know, female body shape. Uh-huh. And um, I'm interested to see how it responds to sure. some of the more traditional male body shapes. And um, so she's working on that. So I'd love to see her. She's really made a wonderful contribution, I think, to the sewing space. Yes. Uh, her Instagram, her newsletter, it's all about people getting comfortable with trying new stuff on their bodies, right. which I think is so right. fabulous. Okay, so once again, mybodymodel.com and use code SOHERE for 15% off your purchase now through February 9th, 2019. Thanks, Thanks my, my body, body model. model. So, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. Okay, so... You know, not to get all like a, you know, psychological woo woo on you here, but if you really do think you have like a fabric buying problem, like, you know, well, if, anybody can if, have an addiction if, 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 yeah, that's like, a problem. It, or, you know, if you're going without food for your family because you're buying fabric, sure. you need to see someone. Uh, right. And it's not us. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, if you, if you really think you're shopping to fill some kind of like void, void right. you know, which like, uh, I've done that. Like, I well, I mean, may have you, bought a new there's, planner there's the other day. There's nothing wrong <laughs> about shopping, you know, and, and purchasing something to make you feel good or something like that. That's not that's not terrible by any means. But it obviously, if it's a problem within the means that you have, yeah. Well, yeah, and uh, I would also right. say, like, so there's there's as monetary means like the monetary space and all that and let's pretend like you're just perfectly financially you know great and everything you know but I'd say try to start and finish like a small project you know using something you've got you know kind of go shopping in your own well I always go shop I, did, I never stash. not go shopping in my own stash first right right I, or, I, I just never not or I go out and buy part of the fabric and and you know use the other yes. part of the fabric is what I already have or something uh-huh. like that. That That's not uncommon for me to do that. So if it does make you feel better to go to the fabric store, to shop that way, because like I, like I said, I, I love to buy I like to buy planners and notebooks. Right. Um, you know, I know that maybe I should, maybe I can like go to my planner and do some things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can make me feel better. Or you come right. up here and right. you whip up a pair right. of leggings. 
And that can help if you can't get to the fabric store too, right? Well, right. Or right. um or if somebody says I need you to costume a play for free in a week. In a week. <laughs> You just go to your stash. Yep, go to your stash. So, you know, give give yourself some kind of, or, there, you know, there are a lot of free patterns online, um, things like that. Like, I... Well, there's things you can sew and donate to, too. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, you know, there's the cancer turbans. There's uh, baby blankets. Baby blankets. There's Layette. Yes. Uh, you know, there's all types of organizations. Yeah, that you can sew. You can find a worthy place for your, for your fabrics. Or... Right. I mean, you can sew those things or you can give your fabric to those projects. So, so it can go, you know, a couple of ways there. We have, you know, what we have here, and I don't think we feel any guilt about it because we know we're going to use it or it's going to right. be a tool for us. You know, so right. what are some fabrics, though, like for someone who's building their stash, for someone who's in a different stage of their sewing journey. And maybe they don't, I feel like there are people who don't have the confidence to know they'll use it one day. Uh -huh. Even though I think everyone should just kind of give themselves, I think you can just appropriate that confidence right now. Like if well, you're trying to I, learn, I think there's one, there was, you know, when I was making a lot of costumes uh -huh. and sometimes, you know, I didn't want to go shopping or I didn't want to wait or I wanted to, I actually had a lot of fabrics that were neutral colors or colors I could dye. Okay, yeah, that's what I, okay. that's exactly. And when I say that, it doesn't mean it had to be white or off-white. Mm -hmm. I had maybe black and white striped fabric that I could dye. I could dye it red, and then I'd have red and black striped fabric. Right. You know, there were things like that I, I could do. Um, I had canvases. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, linings were always big. You had some sort of lining fabric. that, And that's another thing. Fabrics can become linings. Yes. You know, outer, you know, sh fabrics that are supposed to be for the show. Because I don't buy lining. I buy, you know, you, if you look inside, you know, my wool pants, they've got some sort of, they might have a, a rayon uh, print in them. Right. It's right. not a specifically a right. lining fabric. Well, right. and, okay, so you buy that rayon print, and now you've got the choice to make an easy tee or something like that, right. or to line your pants. Right. So don't, I would say. And there's dog beds. Okay, and dog beds. <laughs> um, I would say don't buy anything that you can't see yourself wearing. Well, I think you don't buy, you, yeah, buy what, you think? you buy what you like. Yeah, really. And, and, and the thing about buying what you like is you probably almost will always like it because it's a color you like. There's a reason, you know, there's a reason you chose it. Yeah, you like, um large florals or... okay now caveat okay yeah sometimes sometimes you or me like you know a person uh -huh. i like certain patterns but i don't like to wear them now and that happens i too. had to yes. really come to terms with this i had to say i like this i like to look at it right, right now right, right right okay but actually when i go to make clothes out of it i think i look like a 12 year old girl well okay and that, that really and happened that's, to me and that is where you have to think well this wide stripe i really like it but it doesn't you know it doesn't um tra it doesn't translate into clothing for me or whatever but right. oh it translates into a pillow for Home my back bed for me yes. yeah or, you know yes. uh, again a dog bed <laughs> I but dog beds must be. Zini doesn't have any remorse because she has all the dog beds. I, I, I have to make a dog bed, um, <laughs> you know, or you know, you, you sew doll clothes. What whatever there, there's probably something. Our dog clothes, you know, yeah, animal clothes. Yeah, animal a lot of that stuff. Now. Or a bag. Yes. You know. Oh, I really like this big floral print, but I'll look like a couch if I, you know, right. put this on my body. Now, and, you know, so then got, it turns into a bag. You've got a couple of prints I think like look really good on you, and I put them on myself. And I'm like, I just it's hate kind this of funny. It, it is like, kind of funny, like ugh. because I don't think our coloring is that far off yeah, from each other. Right. But there was that gold knit flowered print that you made several things out of, and I would put it up next to me, and I just felt like. I turned beige. Yeah, and I think, I felt like I turned a funny color in it, and I just didn't look good. This is where I think you, I went to, we're all about, and like. It doesn't mean I didn't like the print. Right. We're all I, about, like, acceptance and, you know, like, being very inclusive and welcoming in the group, you know. But I want people to feel free to have, like, really strong opinions about what they like on themselves. Yeah. Okay, because then you don't buy the, let's say, something that's trendy 
and then put it on you. Well, and I think that's the other. And hate it and feel pressure. No, you can say, you know, I'm never going to buy mustard colored stuff no matter how popular it is because I hate it on me. And that's that taste making I think is really important. Right. Well, and, and that's another thing. The way you even speak about it, it's not that you don't like the fabric. It's that you don't like the fabric for yourself or yeah. for the intention that, that you know. Okay. Now, that you have for it. We have like some super gross colored, what I would call super gross colored stuff around. Okay. But I probably like it. Okay. You no. touch it and you're like, this is the perfect lining. Right. The, you know, right, this, right, right. Like Absolutely. that knit over there. Well, and I would line this, something that, with a mustard and I wouldn't, and you wear, wouldn't it wear it. At, right. Yeah. That, you know, or we'll have, we'll have like a bunch of swim lining. I mean, say it's baby poop green. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you put it under black. You know, I don't know. Right? That, like, that looks really good with black. Okay. Though, well, too. there you go. Yeah. All right. But yeah, sometimes. Like as an accent color. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you cannot wear the mustard color. Yeah. But it can be a binding or a stripe or mm -hmm. something and, and that will work if right. you if you or you know. fa yeah, facing lining. Right, binding, right. It's da -da 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 -da. amazing sometimes like what doesn't look good on you as some sort of an accent or background or whatever can work. And then if you are, you know, we, of course, we're talking about garments more because that's our thing. Right. But with quilting fabric, I mean, the quilting fabric industry is all about the shopping. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean. Everything's all about the shopping. They don't I guess. really want you to make a quilt. Oh, they yeah. just want you to buy, <laughs> you fabric. buy fabric. I mean, whatever you know. The, uh, that, I don't. That's not totally true. Sure, but but, but all these layer cakes and these fat mm -hmm, quarters mm -hmm. and stuff. I'd say, like, be careful. See, well, now, like, see, I wouldn't buy a lot of layer cakes. That's what I'm for saying. For me, because that's not enough fabric. Yeah, it's, right. it can be sometimes that's limiting, limiting me. for that you. That limits me. Now, right. of course, I would rather have the yardage. They've published all sorts of books and everything about how to make stuff well, out right. of that quarters There are projects, cakes. right. And you can get this wide variety of fabrics right. for less money. That's right. But be careful. I would say, I just seen, I feel like I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, crap, now, like, all I ever fat quarters yeah, you know yeah. cupcakes and, and layer cakes so and now, whatever now <laughs> yeah. i have enough fat quarters and right. i would love to buy myself a few bolts of neutral right that i can start to mix in right. with these uh colors right. you know right. i'm a big i i don't i really don't like to make quilts personally like i do not like to make the act of making quilts i do not right. like it but i do like to look at the fabrics like yeah. i would totally just like well you know me i'm like a crazy quilt cakes. person yes yes which kind of means i almost use scraps well, yeah, you so, can use whatever and you want. I, and, no. I like, <laughs> and I like, you know, apparel fabric in my quilts. Right. I, I really do. I see these quilts that I think are so beautiful, but it really is something that just does not scratch my itch for I, making. I wouldn't mind if somebody made it for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's absolutely. how I, I, I mean, no, it's just something I don't want to make. And there are lots of things that I like to do. I've tried. I've tried real hard. You know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So Wait, that's, Mallory and I have made quilts. Yes, yes. And, in fact, plenty of quilts probably. Um, ZD and ZD's you know. like finished some quilts. No. <laughs> ZD's uh, gotten one you know, all the way. <laughs> yes, I got. I have finished many a quilt. I tried to. I even got it on the long arm quilter. My my yeah. little quilt, and I couldn't finish it. <laughs> uh, the one uh, the one thing that we have not talked about yeah. is that piece of fabric you buy and you love it and you really really love it and you don't want to cut into it. Like it's like. You could be afraid to cut into it. Yep. Or you can be afraid you'll use it up and never have it again. Or that there's so. Do you have something like that? Or that, that there's that you've... nothing. There's nothing ever going to be as good. Good, as good it. enough for it. Yeah. Okay. I have. There's one piece of fabric in our um in our library right now that I can think of that I have that thought about. Is there anything you have? Well, one of the things I often think about are my fancy stripe fabrics. Uh huh. You know, and I use them as trim generally, like. You know my bias trims and things yeah. like that, but I'm always afraid. Oh, if you I don't want to run out of them. Yeah, I don't want. <laughs> yeah, because I don't. You know, there's some there that I don't think they're ever going to make again that look like that. Well, especially you know? where we freaking live. I mean, we probably need to. You know, if we run out all right. your pretty. Well, uh, and some of them were stripes. bought, like right. you know, in 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 Chicago at both right. fabrics, and you know, something like we'll that. We'll have was, to go. Yeah. We'll have to go to New York or something. Right. Um, I have the that purple and gold brocade. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a quilted brocade. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're saying purple and gold. You mean that it's, it's like lavender and gold. It's lavender. I oh, the one I was thinking of is like a merlot color. The one I'm thinking of. I should have gotten up and gone and gotten it yeah. while you were talking about your stripes. But anyway, I would like what I envision it being 
is some kind of bustier, like corset uh-huh. sort of looking top with like either a different skirt, uh-huh. you know, um, in the fabric or not, you know, right. or using that. I, I don't know exactly how much is there, but like I think to myself, oh, I like want to be the perfect weight. And I, I like while I was having children, I'm like, and I well, want to be able to wear it for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to make this. Well, I don't know, like. What, what my what your size my boobs are going to be like yeah. and everything you know and and then and then I'm like where would I go <laughs> I would wear this am I going to go drop Get, yeah. Zelda off at preschool in my in when my you have met- an audience with the queen in my metallic purple uh, brocade you know thing where, I mean you know. so you just wrote a blog about a side seam on a pair of leggings yeah and those two fabrics that I have is that leggings that you used as an illustration uh huh. Well, one of them one of them came from L.A. Finch. Uh-huh. One of them, I don't remember where it came from, and it was the the pink, the, and it's the a pink dark stripe. It's a, yeah. yeah, it's a dark pink and a light pink stripe, almost neon. And the pink was has been two different swimming suits at one time. Uh huh. You know, and the other one, I I think was sort of just a piece that Josie sent us. Yeah, and. I did. I do have a rash guard out of uh, the floral. The floral, and then I made those leggings. And there's not enough of either one of those fabrics, like to really make anything anymore. And I have saved these stupid little scraps, and <laughs> I cannot find anything that I like as much as those two fabrics. And why they went together so well. And I, when I wear those, people are like, "Those are the most amazing! Oh my gosh, those are the okay, most so amazing fabric fabrics!" Is you know, from like two thousand. 17 or 18. Right. When, where, when, when is that? When is I that? I believe it was fabric? before this millennium. Okay. Yeah. I believe it was probably 15, 20 years old. Yes. So that's where. And I put them together and I love them together. So maybe it's possible that this fabric buying remorse could be a function of where people are in their sewing journey. Well. And do, do you think? Well, maybe. And, and. So everyone knows the pink fabric, the pink stripe uh-huh. fabric, when I bought it, I think I also wound up making a costume out of it also. Um, it was like the end of a bolt. I only probably needed a yard or something of it at the time. I don't remember. Right. And I think there was like two and a half yards or something. Well, I bought it all. Yeah. Because I was like, I like this. I'm not going to run into this again. You know, which obviously I, my, I was certainly right in my fortune telling at that point. Your fabric compass was attuned right. It was right, to right on intuition. So, you know, it's it, it's funny. But I I will be sad when I have to retire those leggings. And I wear. I, yeah, you wear those. You wear those a lot. Well, they. <laughs> I've actually remade those leggings. Oh, yeah. Have you? I, I did. I made those leggings initially when I started doing Ariel, and then I my shape changed, uh-huh. and I have remade them on it. Like, I mean, yeah. Did you, like, cut them up and just recut yes. them a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, I drafted a new leggings uh-huh. pattern, and I and I remade them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will be really sad <laughs> when I have to retire them. Okay, so if you are starting off your fabric journey and you think, oh my gosh, I've had this fabric for two years, maybe this discussion can give you a little perspective well, yeah, maybe about this will, lifelong right. hobby and creative pursuit you're going to have. Right. Right? Like, just know that it doesn't mean that necessarily that you were, like, wasteful or silly or, or dumb or, you did, you know, you, you didn't pick the right thing. Well, obviously right? people right? would, yeah, and people would give me fabric often uh-huh. you know and I remember I can remember a specific piece we actually have a sample um we it's in my in the, our my uh, travel bag trio thing uh-huh. and the person gave me this fabric and she said I just think this is ugly I forgot where I got it maybe somebody gave it to me do you want it and I made those travel bags out of it and she wanted him she, she would die. She was like, She's uh, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and actually, I did. I actually made her a bag out of one then, and I, I put a monogram on it. You know, well, that was but, always a fun thing to do at, when we had a store with yes. uh, um quote, ugly or unusable right. fabric. And what exchange. you think is ugly, someone else may not. <laughs> or they, it was, yeah, it was they just, can... she goes, I, well, the color combination, and, and I was like, Oh no no! This is turquoise and orange. Like it's it. looking yeah. really cool, <laughs> and, uh, you know. And I I think I was thinking, well, it doesn't have to be a garment, and it doesn't have to be like a curtain in my house. Mm-hmm. This can be something else, right, right? Right. So that's that's good. I also would encourage 
I I think yeah. that we've talked about this in some other podcast episodes, but there are some like staple fabrics. If you're like me, you are drawn to like statement prints and mm -hmm. things. Of course, those are the exciting things to look at. Um, but getting some neutrals in your fabric library can help you to and, use those things. And I things. think staples change. They change yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, when I was very true. You know, I would say. 15 years ago, I had a bolt of Osnaberg fabric. Yeah. You know, I had a bolt of drapery lining that mm -hmm. I could dye. Um, you know, there were certain things I had. Now, I might not think that's my staple anymore. Now it might be um, double brush, black yeah, double like brush a black, poly. Yeah, black knit. Oh, um, oh, mom, mom, that's the wrong button. Or do you, did you do it? Okay. <laughs> it's not the wrong button. <laughs> uh, black double brush poly and maybe some... Um, you know, performance lycra. Yeah. Like black or some neutral color or, you know, or my um, mesh, the power mesh. Oh, yeah. I want to have like that, you know, I want to have that here. I want to know that's here. Same way with thread. Do you need a lot of surgery thread? Do you need stretch surgery thread? Do you need decorative surgery thread? How much um, embroidery thread do you need? How much construction thread do you need? Well, we don't need any, but because we've got it all. <laughs> we don't. You we have uh, <laughs> But I think that changes too. Yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. agree. And if you if you get into quilting, you might have mm -hmm. a different thread library than if you get right. into surging your own knit active wear exactly so yeah figure you know maybe you want some like stretch denim on hand or something if you're right. gonna be doing maybe jeans. you like a lot of denim yeah it, it's just or, or do you do bags yeah so i guess if you're trying to so do you want a lot of lining fabric for bags yeah you know, so, things that you would use for lining so if you are trying to sort of be intentional i think you have to accept that buying fabric is actually part of your learning process right. it's okay if you don't use it for what you thought you'd use it for and that the shelf life of fabric can be rather long. Right. And that you are probably in this sewing thing for the long haul, too. Right. Like, and again, you know, if you're not, there are places that, sure. can, that you know, it can go to. If things really And it change. won't feel wet. You won't just have to put it in a dumpster. Right. Right. Yeah, we did We did just costume a show real quick and used up some things that weren't super precious to us. Anymore. But we hadn't given them away. Uh, but we, right? but, and may, they may have been more precious at one time. At one and, time. and, you know, the priority of them or the usage of them or something has changed. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that was some great tips. Do you have anything else to add before we sign off? Any other? Well, I don't know. Just be happy when you're doing it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just, you know, feel good about it. Feel good, you know. Or, or go to therapy, whatever don't, you need to do. Don't use the grocery money. Okay, yeah, <laughs> to, you know, make sure you can feed yourself. You know, buying stuff. fabric can be your therapy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also. so can, so can uh, you know, making things. And, right. And, like, yes, that is all part of it. Choosing wisely and choosing stuff that is going to make things Well, and again, we and, just did our organizational month, or we're still yeah. in it, I guess, so at the end of it. But kind of, I mean, we like I said, we don't have a filing system or a inventory system, but we know where our fabric is and we know we can see it. Right. Like we know what we have. We can scan easily and go, oh, here's here's all the cottons. You know, here's all this. Here's the wools. Here's the here's where I'm going to find the corduroy or whatever. And um, you know, it's it, we keep it at our fingers, so don't hide it away. Right. Or you'll forget you had it. Yeah, that's very right. good. That's very good. If you keep it out, keep it on your mind. It's not a, it's not something that should cause you guilt. It's something that right. should cause you like, oh, well, I know what I've got when I'm ready for. I'm ready and maybe for just go through it sometimes. Yeah. And the other thing about having fabric on hand is the fabric can inspire you as to what to make. Mm, yeah. So yes, yeah, see it as an asset if you can. Even if you have to go on a fabric buying It's like fast having a box something. of paints to there me. You go. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. You can find us at sohere.com. We're sohere.com on Instagram. And you can email me at mallory at sohere.com. Take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit sohere.com. 